Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, wherever you are. Um, my name is Sophie Duncan, and I am the Deputy Head of College. Welcome to our Meet the Faculty series. Our school is in its ninth academic year. Those of you who were here yesterday will have heard me say that before. And although the pandemic has been very difficult for us, um, we have learned that um, the distance um, the distance between us um, can be overcome. Um, and as a community, it strengthened our interaction with parents and other stakeholders. So we learned that engaging more, albeit virtually, um, with those um, who have a stake in their children's and the school's successes can only be good for the students and for the college. So this ses session is dedicated to the sciences and to mathematics. Um, both of which, of course, are as important as other faculties, although they would probably say that they're a little bit more important. So um, we'll see about that. I'm very lucky to be teaching with colleagues um, who are really experienced and totally dedicated to their subject and um, to the college. Support, supported by the administrative and support staff, um, our faculty and our students uh, make UWC Dilijan a really special place. We hope that today's discussion will give you a glimpse of the people behind the school who make the UWC experience for our students unique, fulfilling and meaningful. Thank you for joining and enjoy the session. I'm handing over to um, Denithi, the Head of Science. Over to you, Denithi. Thank you, Sophie. So, uh, hello, my name is Deniti Bandaranayake and uh, I'm originally from Sri Lanka. So I'm the head of science uh, team at UWC Dilijan. Um, I moved to Dilijan in 2016 with my family, my husband and two kids. So in Dilijan, um, in sciences, we offer three subjects, biology, chemistry, environmental systems and societies and physics. Um, so you will meet the team very soon and they will introduce you, uh, introduce themselves to you. So we are a diverse group of individuals who bring a diverse experience to, the, to, to support our students, uh, especially to find their passion in sciences. So we are striving to offer an excellent science education to our students through engaging stimu and stimulating them and especially creating an intellectually challenging environment. Um, all our science curricula are generated an inquisitive, healthy, curious, uh, a curiosity of the world and the universe and its complexity and beauty. Through this, our main aim is actually to uh, create a respect for living and non-living world that we believe that is the role of science uh, in today's world and uh, on conservation and protection of the world's natural environment. So uh, experience of in science, uh, scientific study is very important for our students. And uh, we, uh, we train our students to research independently and finally to perform their individual research. So in order to achieve all these tasks, we have uh, uh, multiple resources. We have laboratories which are well equipped uh, for, for high school students to carry out their own individual researches. And as a team, um, we have range of different teaching and learning uh, uh, experience resources, uh, online, offline. Um, in the meantime, um, we are a group of nine, nine in the team and you, uh, 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 you will see them, uh, and we nine of us teach biology, chemistry, ESS, and we have two lab technicians who help our students, uh, uh, especially in their in their individual uh, research. So personally, I teach biology with Madhu, whom you will meet right after me. Uh, we offer biology in both standard and high level and uh, we prepare our students to achieve a variety of specialized areas in biology. So I will pass, pass on to Madhu. Madhu. 
Thank you, Denity. Hello, everyone. Uh, I have met you in a different capacity before. I'm Madhu, the head of residential life. I'm originally from India, but now a British citizen. As Denithi said, I teach biology. Uh, in the past, actually, I was a research scientist uh, and research was my passion. However, due to family commitment, I had to give up my passion and uh, look after my family. So when I was ready again to come back to the workforce, I realized that uh, in sciences, uh, continuing that passion in research was very difficult because time, with time things change, technology changes, and it becomes very difficult to pursue the career in research. So I thought about passing my passion of sciences to the students who they can, who then can fulfill their ambition and my goal and my dream will be fulfilled through them. So that's how I came into teaching. Uh, my specialization was cytogenetics and I love every field of sciences and I enjoy teaching sciences and I enjoy challenging students and finding the true potential in them and making them passionate about sciences. So now I'll pass on to Azneev, who is one of our ESS teachers. Azneev. Sorry, thank you, Madhu. Um, hello, I'm Azneev. I am one of the ESS teachers and I'm also a residential house parent um, here. I moved to Dilijan with my family. I'm originally Armenian, but I didn't live in Dilijan. I moved here in 2016 and I'm in school from 2017. Um, this is my third year in teaching ESS, um, which is only an SL subject in group three, which is individuals and societies and group four sciences. My background is, um, physics. I graduated here at Van State University. As Madhu, I was a researcher and I left it due to family commitments. And also it was difficult uh, to do research in physics without having proper equipment. So I'm really happy that our students have chance to realize their ideas ex experientially in our school which provides them all of the opportunities to um, do their research um, experientially, providing all of the materials they need, all of the equipment they need and um, create good works. I'll pass to Bharat, uh, who is the, another ESS teacher here. Um, good afternoon and good evening. Myself, Mr. Bharat Bhushan Dhalakhandi. I am originally from India and I have a background of uh, teaching. I started my teaching from year 2003. This is my 19th year going on and I am specialized in geography and ESS. And I have a, in geography, I have a specialization in disaster management. I have experienced that one in a geography one and I'm teaching here geography, ESS. ESS in SL right now. And uh, we are working for that one uh, to give them a support for the uh, experimental being with this one because uh, mostly an integrated subject from geography and ESS one. So this is about me and I moved here in 2021 with my family. That's all. And I'm passing on to Stefan. Thank you, Parat. Yes, so I am Stefan. I am originally from Denmark. Um, I have a background in engineering, which I studied, uh, but I ended up as some of my colleagues working in research for a few years. Um, and at some point needed a career change and figured that something slightly more social than the very specialized research was, was more me. Uh, so I started teaching. I was teaching IB physics and mathematics for five years in a school in Denmark. And then I learned about the UWC movement and joined 
UWC here in Dilijan in 2019. So this is my ninth year as a teacher and my fourth year in Dilijan. When I'm not teaching, I am also one of the house parents, deputy head of residential life. Uh, for me, my background, I think, makes me really passionate about physics. Uh, I love the, the diversity within the subject, the many different subtopics we cover during the, the time. We teach physics on both standard level and higher level with both uh, classes taught together, which is also a, a welcome challenge. And I think it's it's good for students to acknowledge their differences also by, by being taught at different levels in the same classroom. I will pass the word to Jaime, who is the other physics teacher here. Hello, I'm uh, Jaime. I'm more, um, originally from Spain, but I grew up in Belgium. And then after that, I've been living uh, different places across the world. Uh, my background is uh, theoretical physics, but uh, despite that, I recognize the importance and how exper experimental physics is the foundation of science, or experimental science is the foundation of everything we know. So I, I try to convey that uh, to the students, and I give uh, experiments a very important place in, in, in the classroom. Um, I always try to move away from textbook uh, questions and problems and try to provide the students with real life context and real life problems. And in, such, uh, in doing so, I try to uh, show the students how science doesn't always work or, to be more accurate, has its difficulties. And dealing with those difficulties is what, really is, uh, what, what uh, science really is about. And um, outside the academics, um, I have a passion about swimming and water sports, and um, it's something I, I practice quite often over here with the lovely swimming pool that we have. Um, I'm going to then pass it on to Livon, who is uh, one of our essential uh, members of staff in the department that helps with the, um, with the labs. Thank you, Jaime. My name is Levon. I'm from Armenia. Uh, before joining this school, I was working as a researcher in physics field. So by major, I'm a physicist. I'm working here as a lab technician. I'm helping students in the laboratories, uh, helping to finish the internal assessment. And this year also I joined to our residential team. And uh, thank you. I'm passing the word to my colleague, Ramya. Thank you, Stefan. Thank you, Levon. I'm Ramya. I'm originally from India. I hold master's degree in microbiology. Before joining UWC, I worked in primary school, in various primary schools in India and in China. I have joined uh, UWC two years ago, and this is my second year working here as a laboratory technician. Thank you. And I'll hand it over to Diniti. Thank you, Ramya. And uh, Mary, who is our chemistry uh, specialist, uh, will join us soon. Mary, are you there? No, I'm here. <laughs> Sorry, I'm out of breath because I had to run all over to school to find somebody whose computer was working. It's technology glitch. Hi, my name is Mary Tazan. I am the chemistry teacher. I'm originally from Canada. Um, I've taught for 30 years uh, in uh, Canada, New Zealand, Hong Kong mainly. And I have been with UWC Diligen now, this is my third year here. And I've been an IB chemistry and biology and ESS teacher for the last oh, 10 years, give or take. Um, for those of you interested in the how the course is looking right now, I teach the SLs and the HLs together. So the standard level is the core, and they all cover the core. And that prepares a student for a, a good grounding in chemistry so that they understand the world around them a little bit and um, can critically think about some of the things they're hearing in the news or products that they buy, and um, just in terms of their lifestyle. Um, the higher level course 
is the same topics but covered in a lot more depth. Um, and that's more preparing for university. Uh, uh, yeah, I, I, my main background is in chemistry. Uh, so I majored in chemistry, minored in biology, and then did most of my, my studies were related to biochemistry uh, when I was in uni. And that continues to be an area that I really enjoy, particularly organic chemistry, but I'm also interested in biology and particularly environmental studies. Thank you. Sorry for being late. Thank you, Mary. So, uh, so this is the science team, uh, and we are. I'm very. I'm privileged to work with this team. And uh, if you have any questions, we are very happy to answer your questions. Um, uh, maybe after I we we uh, introduce the science faculty muscles. Um, good afternoon, good evening, everybody. Um, I'm Marcel, I'm from the Netherlands originally. I'm here in my third year. I'm uh, the head of uh, maths. Um, I've been a maths and physics teacher. Originally, I, uh, I mastered in physics, but I've been a, a maths teacher for a long time in other international schools um, or around the world, uh, more or less. Um, but I'm here now in my third year in uh, Didichan and happy to be here. Um, I want to say a few things about maths at IB level in general and about how we uh, do maths here at uh, UWC um, before I ask my colleagues uh, to introduce themselves. We are here with uh, four maths teachers, of which I am one. Um, maths is uh, a bit different than other subjects, a subject that all students have to do. Um, so it's not an elective. Um, we have maths in two different flavors, courses. There is the maths application and interpretation, and there is the maths analysis and approaches. In brief, there is maths application and there is maths analysis. Um, the application course is, like the word is saying, a bit more applied maths. Um, a lot of focus on modeling that is using mathematical functions to describe real world phenomena. And there's also a large focus on um, um, statistics there. Uh, apart from that, it, it contains also uh, geometry, trigonometry um, and uh, algebra, of course. The analysis course is uh, a bit less applied, a bit more uh, algebra there, a bit more analytical thinking. And um, that is often considered a bit a higher level course. So students have to choose um, themselves which course they want to follow, applications or analysis. And then they have to choose, do I want to do this at higher level or standard level? We offer the analysis course both at higher level and standard level, but the application course only at standard level. And that is because from the past we have experienced that there's only a, a limited number of students interested in the applications course at higher level. Um, now, like I said, the applications course is for many students a bit more easier to handle, a bit more uh, yeah, approachable. And um, that has uh, its consequences also. That means that the application course at standard level is a bit less well recognized than uh, the analysis course at standard level. So um, whatever students choose, uh, the IB in, in itself is uh, very well recognized by all the universities around the world. But um, if you want to do a course that requires some maths at university level, then you are advised to do the analysis course. Applications is for those students who want to continue at university level with um, subjects that and topics that have less uh, maths content there. Um, we do know from the past that um, the step from previous maths courses, uh, whatever that has been, of course, our students come from all different places, but the step towards IB maths can be quite challenging, not only because of the level, but also about uh, because how the maths at IB level is being um, assessed and taught. Um, maths at IB level is not just about 
memorizing knowledge. It's more about applying your knowledge, more about thinking skills and uh, investigational things, uh, thinking. Um, so that can be quite a step for students, certainly in the first weeks. Um, to help students with that, we have a, a support system. Every Wednesday and Friday, we have a homework support uh, organized by teachers so students can come and ask their questions or about their homework or ask if they've got any problems with uh, topics that have been explained in class. We also have a system um, student to student support that is mainly DP2 students that um, help uh, the weaker or the less strong math students uh, with their homework or with uh, anything that they don't understand yet. Um, in terms of resources, um, the making use of technology is also a skill in uh, IB Maths, and all students get a graphic calculator. Uh, they get that from the school, or they can use their own if they happen to have one themselves. Um, they are being taught and how to use that tool, and that is for they can use that calculator for two years, and after two years they return it to the school. We also, of course, make use of books, and students can choose whether they prefer uh, a hand copy or an online book. And we use also uh, online resources like just the Cogniti, that's an online book and online exercises that students can work on and um, that we also use for uh, setting tasks for them. Um, math higher level is three lessons a week. Math standard level is two lessons a week. So it's not combined courses. Students are in either analysis, higher level class, analysis, standard level class, or application standard level class. In DP1, we have the applications course at standard level only, like I said. Normally that is two lessons a week, but uh, because the, of course it's quite a step towards IB level, um, we offer the uh, analysis, or the application standard level course also in uh, three lessons a week. That is, in brief, how the maths at IB level and the maths in our school is uh, introduced, um, is um, organized. Um, I want to introduce now um, my colleagues, um, Anand, Elisaveta, and Regine uh, to you. Uh, let's start with Anand. Um, Anand, can you introduce yourself, please? Thank you, Marcel. Hello, all. My name is Ananda. I am from India. This is my 13th year teaching IB diploma program, and I'm uh, this is my third year in UWC Dilijan. I'm teaching the uh, analysis and approaches uh, uh, course this year, and I'm happy to see you all. I'll now pass on to my colleague, Elizabeth. Hello, um, my name is Elizabeth. I am originally from Russia. Um, it's my third year here at UWCD, and I teach second year analysis HL and applications SL, and first year analysis SL and HL. Um, a little bit about my background, I did my bachelor's degree in mathematics at the University of Manchester, and then for my master's thesis, I researched, um, I used statistical tools um, to research how air quality affects children's health. Um, this is me and I'll pass it on to Regan. Thank you, Elisabetta. Hello everyone, I'm Regan. I'm originally from the Philippines. I have been teaching for about 10 years now. This is my fifth year of teaching the IB Diploma program and this is my third year here at UWC Dilijan. Um, during this school year, I am teaching the analysis standard level in second year and the analysis higher level for the first year students. And to Marcel. Yes, there, there I am again. Um, I did mention that for myself, I'm, I'm teaching mainly the applications course. That is because um, I'm a bit more... Um, I have a bit more link with applied math because uh, my background is in uh, physics. I, uh, I uh, did my university at physics level. Um, that is in brief math at uh, our school and math at IB level. Um, as mathematicians, we are 
a bit less talkative, maybe we use a bit less uh, time to introduce ourselves. But um, if you've got any questions for us or for the science team, then um, please let us know. I think, Muscles, it looks like we don't have questions at the moment. Well, I see a, a, a question in the chat. Um, an example of the difference between analysis and applications, Mats. Um, what book we use? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. There's a difference in the courses. There's a question about the difference between the application and the analysis course. Um, both courses um, in IB Mats, there are five units. Um, unit one is number and algebra, number two is functions, number three is geometry and trigonometry. Four is probability and statistics, and five is calculus. Now, there is an overlap between the both courses uh, that many topics, they do the same. But in uh, analysis, then there's more focus on the more abstract mathematics, um, more what we call also called pure maths, more focus on algebra, more focus on calculus, where uh, the applications course is more how maths is used in our daily life. So we use functions to describe uh, uh, any phenomena like temperature, velocity, or whatever. And um, there's also a lot more statistics in the applications course. So it's more related with applied things, more related with uh, how we experience maths in uh, our daily lives. Um, is there, there's another question. Uh, there, there's a question. Uh... What sort of environmental challenges is in Armenia facing that enable you to link ESS topics to the broader national context in class with students? Uh, Bharat or Asni, would you like to answer the question? Bharat? Yeah, thank you, Diniti. I would like to answer this question. Uh, basically, we are looking for the, uh, you can say the environmental challenges is a climate change one, the temperature rises over here. So we are working for, we explain about the uh, renewable sources of energy, which is we are starting with the UWC also. A sustainability program we have started with the UWC. Uh, Dilijan one, that uh, we install the solar panels in our primary wing, as well as we are communicating, we are spreading an awareness to the society through our CAS projects also, because this topic we are uh, link with the CAS, with different activities. So the circular economy, how the circular economy work, re reduce, reuse, recycle, that initially we started in uh, college and we led with the collaboration with the uh, Dirijan City Center one, that uh, volunteers working with us. And we are doing the cleaning of a riverside area and of some of the forest area. So this is how we link our subject with the community based. Thank you, Bharat. Apart from that, uh, uh, in Armenia, we have uh, one of the oldest uh, uh, nuclear, nuclear power plant. Uh, so we, you, we constantly talk about uh, the environmental challenge we have uh, with the nuclear, nuclear power plant. And uh, the largest uh, water body we have is Savan Lake. And Savan Lake is currently uh, facing two major challenges with the uh, uh, reducing water level. So uh, we constantly talk about these challenges with our students. Uh, Marcel, there's another math question for you. Yes, I noticed that it's about uh, the class size. Um, now for math, we have um, four teachers and uh, four teachers and we all do uh, part of application and analysis course. Um, it is like the DP1, We've got eight different DP1 classes, uh, no, seven different DP1 classes and nine different DP2 classes. If you do a bit of math there, then the average class size is uh, between 10 and 15 students. However, it makes a bit a difference of how popular the course is because students can choose themselves what they want to do. We have as a limit a class size of 20. So the largest class is 20, but we also have classes that have less than 10 students. So it depends a bit on what students are choosing themselves. In DP1, um, we've got still some movement of class of students because 
sometimes students choose a certain subject uh, applications sl or whatever and they later discover that it's not their course not fitted for their level and they want to change the course that's possible in the first couple of weeks months um, so class sizes are still a bit changing and we've got now some quite large classes and we hope to address that later on that we can split some of the classes maybe with us as, 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 as a rule for the school we have never have more than 20 students at most classes are between 10 and 15 students um are there any other questions uh yes um there's another question muscles how does students to student help work uh, in math classes sorry i didn't hear that one. Can you? uh how does the student to student help work in math classes oh okay yeah that is uh the support system we have there that is uh not uh in class that is more after our our classes after our lessons like we've got then the support system done by teachers that is on wednesday and friday afternoon uh, but we also have the math support by students that is mainly strong dp2 students that offer support to the um a bit less strong uh mainly dp1 or dp2 students and the that's organized by the students themselves as it is actually a cas activity and there is an app for that and students can up, sign up for that app and they can um, say their interest uh, about when they want to support and then every student every student is then linked with a certain a certain uh, student uh tutor that's how we call it and they can uh, go to that tutor all the time when they have questions about their homework or whatever sometimes it, it is a bit easier to address uh, a fellow student than to go to your teachers because the fellow students are always around and you can uh, meet them uh, at any time that you wish and that is between the tutor and the tutor then themselves how they organize that so every student that wants to have that support uh, makes the indicates that through an app service that students have set up themselves and then um, for every student there is a tutor and they uh, uh, organize them themselves how and when they're going to do the support sessions thank you masters uh there is that's another question maybe stefan you can answer this question can you please let me uh, let me know what kind of experimental physics experiences do you provide at UWCD? Yes, I'm happy to try. Um, I am happy to report that we have some very well equipped laboratories. So we have a lot of nice equipment. Um, generally, the, the physics course, as the other sciences, are very experimentally focused. So over the course of the two years, there is some which we call prescribed practical experiments which the students are expected to, to do. Um, we have quite a lot of equipment for working with electrics, electronics. We have a lot of equipment for optical experiments, um, which we have in, in large quantities, so the whole class can work at the same time. Then other experiments will sometimes be performed in smaller groups or at different times. Um, we will do experiments related to heat, energy transfer, um, when we investigate gases or gas loss. Uh, and then a, a big component is also the student's internal assessment, where in each student has to come up with their own question that they want to try to answer. And in the vast majority of cases, this also involves them designing and performing an experiment of their own, collecting some sort of data, um, and then, of course, analyzing the data. And, and those experiments really vary very much. Um, we have some very good experienced uh, lab technicians, and we can almost always find a solution where the students can somehow work with the things that interest them. There are a few sort of kind of specialized equipment that, that we might not have available that are not easy to get hold on, um, but, but almost always it's possible for students to, to get hands-on experience with whatever it is that interests them. Thank you, Stefan. Jaime, maybe you can talk about talk a little bit about the recent experience we gave up for our students by taking them to a 
a conference recently in Yerevan. Jaime? Okay, um, so, so uh, I will quickly talk about it. So we, we provide our students uh, experience uh, every ex possible experience we can. For example, when there are international science-related conferences happening in Yerevan or Armenia, we always provide our students the, an, an opportunity to participate and meet the uh, the scientists from around the world. So this was a, this was a great experience. And uh, two weeks ago, a group of our students had the, had the opportunity to. Uh, go to Yerevan and uh, meet some of the physicists uh, who 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 were great in the who are great in the field, and that was uh, that is just an example where how we provide how we use our resources with us to give the students the best experience. Mm. There's another question uh, for ESS: How does the ESS coursework uh, course work? Uh, Bharat, would you like to answer the question? Thank you, Dinidhi. I would like to answer the question. ESS work is uh, basically is interdisciplinary work, which help in other subject also. It is a combination of uh, individual and society and the science one. So some those who student, those who are uh, linked with the geography one and some of the economics one, they, it is helping them for that one, that subject also along with the biology and some few parts of a uh, physics one, because we, when we are doing our internal assessment one, they are helping the practical work or analysis part or graphical or this one, they are uh, getting an idea and knowledge for this one. Same with the uh, mathematics also. When we are, they are doing the chi uh, chi test or any other test one, they are taking help and we are calling the mathematics teacher also for the support to help them in a, um, a statistical calculation, standard deviation, other one. Thank you, Diniti, to you. Thank you, Bara. Uh, Jaime, thank you for joining back. I, I know you had uh, some internet problems. Uh, it's, I, it looks like Jaime still has the problem. Um, Mary, uh, there's a question for you. Uh, someone would like to know well, from what university did you, did you graduate from? I think uh, uh, Mary has the same internet problem, so. Uh, Maybe if she joins, I will pass the question to her. Um, so these are the questions we have so far. Uh, maybe if we have, if you have more questions, you can contact us anytime and uh, we are very happy to answer your questions. So thank you. So thank you very much for joining us. And this is the math and science faculty from UWC Dilijan. Thank you, Dinesi. Um, that was really interesting. Every time I listened to these introductions, I learned something new. So um, I learned a lot about ESS this time. Could I just say that we have um, opened a new section on the parent portal, which contains um, the IB subject briefs for each of our subjects. So um, the IB publishes a two page overview of um, the subject, the content and also the assessments. And we have um, put those um, summaries onto our parent portal for easy access. So you can find out more there. Thank you very much, everybody. Um, I'm going to sign off now and I hope you have a good rest of the day. Thank you very much.